So last night I was on the phone to a friend just talking about these live chats and he was saying that he wants to do, you know, do something similar, not similar topics, but like he wants to basically use Instagram story to, to have conversations with people. So we were talking about how it works and blah, blah, blah. And in the course of this conversation, I was saying, you know, I've really made this stand that I want to, you know, create something that's um, sort of inspiring for creatives, et cetera, et cetera. I said, that's my commitment. That's why that's what keeps me turning up, doing it, blah, blah, blah. So then this morning, like I literally like my vo my voice because I was coughing all night. I was filming all night as well. But it was it was kind of cold. It wasn't freezing, but it was kind of cold. Anyways, so I woke up not feeling good, and I was like, oh, tonight's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to. And I even composed the you know Instagram post that I was gonna I was gonna create to to let you guys know that it wasn't on. And then I just had this little nagging thought of like. But you made a stand for something and that stand was for this thing to happen. So you can't just let, or not you can't, are you just going to let a cold stop you from being able to do it? Maybe you could do it. Maybe there is a way you could do it. And I was thinking, yeah, I could just like speak quieter or I could, you know, make it shorter. And then I started thinking about this other thought that had come up for me the other day. Um, hey, confabulations galore. Um, <clears throat> this other thought that I had was that, you know, when you make a commitment to do something or to not do something, say I'm going to stop smoking or I'm going to go to the gym, doesn't the universe always send you challenges like friends who tempt you with cigarettes or, you know, your gym, the nearest gym to you closes and so the nearest one is further away and then you say, oh, well, I can't go now because it's too far away. The universe just immediately challenges you the minute you make a commitment. And I always thought that it was a test. Hey, Lucy, um, I always thought that that was a test, but it's actually the universe helping you because every time you're tested and you overcome it, you gain a new strength because, you know, um, what's that phrase? Um, calm seas don't make good sailors. You know, sailors, you know, good, good, competent, capable sailors have to go through storms to be able to become strong sailors. And then and then they can navigate any kind of waters. So so I actually thought to myself, ha ha, I am being tested. So this is what had me turn up for you guys. So I just wanted to share that with you because I thought that was quite um Interesting, especially as we're talking about success. Hey, Chloe and Elijah. What's up, Elijah? Carly, hey. Yes, as Martha. Um, so, um, Chloe, this is my little, and uh, Elijah, I don't know if you're going to stick around. This is my little creativity live chat I do every Sunday Sunday night. So, with this, and we talk about different topics every week. And this week, we're talking about success. Just to explain, I've got a bit of a sore throat, so I'm talking a bit quieter just so that I don't make it worse. I don't think talking is going to make it worse, but I think if I start shouting and shit, and, and like drinking <laughs> or something, then that will. And I've got my trusty stuff. It is kind of minging that I bought from Boots today. Glycerine and blackcurrant. I'm like, assuming the glycerine is to coat my throat or something. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so I'm just going to get started. And forgive me if I have to, you know, if I don't do as, quite as long as we normally do. Um, I'll see how my throat's getting on. But I think I'm going to be all right. I think it's going to be all right. <laughs> I'll muscle through. Anyways. So success. So the first place that I wanted that the, the you know as always is a thread that gets pulled, um, and the first place I started thinking was what is it? Because I think that what as as with all the other things that we've talked about, there's always like this received idea of what success is. Uh, hey, the Blue Knight eighty eight, welcome. Um, so there's always this received idea of what success is. Like you know we've got these agreements in society almost as to what it should look like usually around material stuff it's n it's not very often to do with um anything sort of intangible like that it's usually like a material type of thing cars big house money in the bank <clears throat> international travel you know where you know whatever it is the, these things that we we decide but i'm starting to think that there's so many different ways to to define it and maybe like success is about defining it more for yourself and taking ownership of what you call successful back. Because on one level, you could say that a creative person who has decided, who's gone from one career to another, who's gone from like a non-creative career to a creative one, is already has already won. Because they have if they have embarked in the career of their choice, they're doing, they're following their dream, they're living their passion kind of thing. So you've already so you're already successful and then everything on top of that is just window dressing, set dressing, you know, um, which I think is quite, a, you know, 
it might be a bit Pollyanna-ish because like if you're a waiter who desperately wants to be an actor but all you're ever doing is waiting, I don't know if you could consider that successful if you're not you if you're not actively doing doing your living your passion as in acting even if it's on an amateur level but just the fact that we live in a society where you can choose to do that sort of thing and you don't have to worry about you know <coughs> your kid's school getting bombed or something like that that is one that could be a way of like thinking of of success um i also had this thought about how sometimes we can um because we we think of these trappings and stuff as like the things that we might want like it's almost like a be careful what you wish for type of thing because i've mentioned this before of just like when you go down a particular path and you end up sort of generating success in uh in a particular direction doing something that actually isn't fulfilling you can find yourself feeling trapped and it's so weird like because you because people look at say i don't know beyonce is a really good example because she's a huge superstar but you like you think of her life and you just think well that's it that's perfect isn't it because she's got the fame that most you know the people who, performers music performers say would want she's got the fan base she's got the money she's da, 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 da. but if she's not rewarded if she doesn't feel rewarded in <coughs> in the things in the things that she's doing then it's going to be for nothing because <coughs> there was <coughs> there was a period of about it was probably about it was after destiny's child it was after she left destiny's child and she sort of rebranded and she kind of disappeared for a bit and we kind of forget that now because she she feels like she's been around forever and there's there just always was beyonce there's probably a little paragraph about her in the bible or something but like there was a period where she stopped and she re um what's the word she recalibrated and and reinvented herself a little bit and I think that, that that's sort of testament to the fact that actually, sometimes um, y y it doesn't matter what you've got, what you've got materially, or even like what your what your career looks like. If it's not rewarding to you, if it's not satisfying to you, if it's not filling you up, it doesn't matter how much success, trappings of success it generates. It doesn't mean anything. And look, look Matthew McConaughey is another example. <clears throat> he stopped. Acting took himself completely out of the picture, went cycling with Lance Armstrong for like two or three years and he reinvented himself. And I remember him saying something about he he started to become people's good idea. Like, you know, because he had that the whole career of being the rom-com robot sort of thing almost that he became the good idea because he was so it, it was it was one of those sexy castings that you can do against type. Ooh, let's get a rom com robot type actor to play a really meaningful, powerful, dramatic role. And because he's a good actor, it worked out. So, um, hey Adam. Um, <clears throat> so so I think like there is something uh, like there's almost like a cautionary tale. Maybe I'm bringing this in a bit too early, but there is definitely like a cautionary tale when it comes to success of like you know, not necessarily. Making sure maybe the maybe what I'm trying to say is that the first the first and most important thing about success is that it's joy filled, because if you're doing something that you hate or that doesn't fill you up or is not rewarding, is that even can you even consider that success? You know, in some ways, because you're just you're just a um, what's the word like a you're you're a slave. You know, you're a, you're a slave to the thing that you have to do. I remember when I was sort of like, you know, a little crossroads in my career, and I was just at the point where I was going to buy a property, and the property was quite expensive, and it would have meant that I would have had to have been earning at a particular tier. And and in the, in the end, I'd put in an offer on this place, and then the, the mortgage company said that they couldn't understand why the buyers, why where the increase in the price of the property had come from because it had literally almost doubled in value since the p people had bought it and they were like we don't buy this why is it so they refused to l lend me the entire amount that i needed and so I, I i lost the property and um i was not massively disappointed that was the weird thing about it i remember <clears throat> thinking oh i would have liked that to have worked out but actually i just started to think through what that would have meant it would have meant staying on a path doing things that i wouldn't have necessarily wanted to do and i would have been doing them specifically thinking in terms of money rather than thinking in terms of what makes me happy because that itself in itself is success and that in itself is a luxury is to be able to think and 
uh, think what makes me happy in terms of the work that I'm doing. And it's a, and it's a it's a privilege that not everybody has because you know that some everybody's got their life balanced in a particular in their own way. Like for example, my brother, he his life is balanced towards the weekend. You know what I mean? And he travels a lot. So he and his wife like have a really have a lot of holidays and they have like really like lovely experience outside of work, but their work isn't necessarily a deep passion, I don't think. So it's a privilege in that respect to be able to even just be like living out your passion through the work that you do, which is where we spend most of our time, apart from sleeping, you know, we spend most of our time uh, performing our job. So that's success, I think. Anyways, um, so uh, Badavinets, uh, hello, and um, Ryan, hello. So what else did I think? Oh yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm gonna have to open some water, I think. Let's uh, push the boat out, it's a Sunday night, get the uh, sparkling water on the go. So then the other part of it is like, what part of you is defining the success? So you remember last week we were talking about like tiers of consciousness. So, you know, I, I don't necessarily know specifically what they are, but I was, let's talk in most general terms, I would say there's like kind of this like magical thinking, which is how children think, mythical thinking, which might include like mythologies. Um, then there's like science and religion and stuff like that. And the moral stuff that we talked about, that's one tier. And then there's a sort of another tier above that that might be the more spiritual aspect. I think there is even maybe one above that that might be the enlightened aspect of ourselves. And we've, we dance through these different tiers all the time, depending on who we're interacting with, depending on what we're doing, depending on what state we're in, we're depending, depending on so many different things. The skill is to be able to control which consciousness you're in. But, but when we're in those different consciousnesses, we see the world in a particular way and we want different things, um, depending on what, which one of those tiers we're in. So, for example, uh, you know, the consciousness that is more about the me, um, that's going to want success to show up in a more particular way. It might be more like as an ego, that's, that's going to probably want consciousness to look more like um, uh, validation, fans, um, you know, recognition, awards, blah, 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 you know, that type of thing. Whereas if you're in another, in another tier of consciousness that is about maybe a bigger context for the me that you are, then it, th those things probably won't become important and then it'll become about something else. So it might become about, I don't know, like say for example, community, um, giving back, um, being of service, that type of thing. Um, and so on and so forth. So like there's diff so different parts of who you are um, will require success to look different. Require success to, lose, to look different. I actually finished the sentence. All right, um, I'm gonna go back. And so uh, Jakim says, for me, success is when the knot in my stomach goes away for a while anyways. Look, that's the brilliant thing is like, there's no right or wrong way of defining it. It just is what it is for you. And the best thing about that is, if you can define success by your own terms, it means that you don't need exterior forces to tell you when you've been successful. Because isn't that one of the, the pitfalls in the way that things are set up at the moment is that often we're looking exterior to ourselves to say to, to for, for validation that we've succeeded. Did I win the award? Oh, I didn't win the award, therefore I didn't succeed. Did I get the job? Oh, I didn't get the job, therefore I didn't succeed. Whereas even trying could be considered to be the success. Even being in the game, having a having being on the court might be the success if you are able to allow yourself to define your success success by your own definition. Hey Tom, hey Rose. Um, Martha, being of service, heart, she says. And Ryan says success can be really anything, but mainly I'm guessing people think of financial success. I'm uh, more proud of being a good father and husband. That's what uh, that's what I've succeeded in. My job is quite rewarding. But there you go. That's what I'm talking about. It's like. Some people wouldn't necessarily go being a father and a, a husband, a great husband is, is success. But if that's your definition of it, then you've succeeded. And then you get to experience all that comes with feeling successful. You don't have to wait for somebody else outside of yourself to just be able to go, yeah, nailed it, <laughs> which is brilliant. Um, I Listen, the other thing as well, I should say, hello, Tom, hello. Um, I should say is I'm still navigating this and I go in and out of different headspaces with feeling successful or not successful um but but more more often I'm allowing myself to experience it because you think 
you, we project onto other people, that person must feel successful. Like I might look at Jennifer Lawrence, I don't know why I bring her up, I think I was talking about her earlier, and look, she must feel successful. Come on, she's got to feel successful. And then you bloody well, to listen to an interview and she talks about how insecure she is or something or how she she hasn't quite managed to do the kind of work that she wants to do yet or there's so many things she wants to achieve and when she does those then she'll feel successful oh it's um it's all it's all it's all there for us to have if we want to if we want to define it by our own by our own criteria rather than letting everybody else tell us what's so in our own lives when they haven't walked on the path that we've walked on um rose says Hello, goddess. Oh, bless you. As social media makes me feel unsuccessful, addicted to scrolling to compare myself to others. Thanks for speaking so beautifully. Oh, bless you. Um, yeah, I mean, social media is a bit of a nightmare, and I've noticed myself. I, I, I think I'm starting to prefer people's stories and the, the, the feeds. I think I look at the stories more, but so, because stories are literally the most curated, awesome snapshot of everybody's lives, and so you sometimes when you scroll through stories on Instagram, it can be just like. How come everyone in the world is like having the most awesome life and I'm here in my hotel room like, ah? but sometimes I look through stories and I just go, yeah, these are the people I know. Yeah, living their best life. Yes. So like it depends what headspace you bring to it, but it can, it, in and of itself, it's a neutral thing. Like what is on people's stories or on people's feeds or social media, but what we bring to it, what meaning we bring to it when we observe it and who we're being when we come to it. So sometimes I will not look at stories because I know that I'm feeling insecure and just feeling like left out of the party sort of thing. And so I leave <laughs> leave it alone. And then other times, um, I feel like really inspired by it and I'm just like yeah these are and I don't say it lightly like when you are in a peer group of success you are successful that's where your success comes from because it's the universe letting you know you're close so so sometimes it can be inspiring but it's, it's how you how we choose to interact with it ultimately but it is a challenge because it social media and I think the people that create social media platforms know this it fires off so many neurological biological impulses chemicals flooding around our body dopamine from getting likes and stuff like that you know that it's very difficult to resist going with the experience that you're experiencing when you experience these things um so i don't know i can't say any more than that about it because i'm i am subject to it as much as anybody else but yeah i think how we we can probably have a little bit more authority over how we experience other people's social media than we than we realize because I'm quite unconscious sometimes when I'm when I'm looking at social media in that in the sense that I'm not thinking I don't have to look at this I I don't have to be intimidated intimidated by all these people having awesome lives I just think oh my god everyone's having an awesome life um and Ryan says lol nailed it and uh, Tilly Pitt joined welcome Ryan says I agree social media can make you feel like you're underachieving it really can I mean I mean god we could do a whole thing about social media there you go that's next week's topic done well done thanks Rose um Rose is very well put it's the energy yeah I mean and also we have to remember like I say it's a curated experience like no one's putting up images or very few people put up images of them depressed crying blah 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 unless they want to talk about that like you don't see the mundane in people's lives like even I can feel myself waiting for something awesome to happen so that I can, <laughs> you know, take photos of it, video it and put it up and go, see world, <laughs> I'm, I'm having an interesting life. Um, Joaquin agrees and Steve says stories are the most important thing. I'm reading stories of slaves in the US and that stuff is life changing. The stories of the survivors of gun violence, life changing. Um, when I say stories, I'm talking about Instagram stories. But of course, yes, stories are the bedrock of the human existence. Um, there's more to say about that, but I, I'll, I'll go. I'm going down a rabbit hole if I go down the road of talking about stories. But stories, God, that's another great topic. Maybe we should talk about stories one week. What was it? Stories and social media. Um, Wi-Fi is cutting out. Confabulation galore says, okay, no problem. Well, you can watch it on catch up. So you know, when you get better Wi-Fi, if you need to, don't feel like you have to struggle through because it's an, it's annoying. I know. Um, oh, so here's an idea that I really like. It was introduced to me in a program that I did. I'm always doing programs because I'm thirsty for information and <clears throat> knowledge and understanding about things like this. Is um, the 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 person who was facilitating this program wanted to share this idea of like post survival art. Now, what he meant by that was he was saying that the this is I'm condensing a three day program now, right, into like trying to condense it into sort of a very succinct um, 
definition. But what he was saying was that basically when we, most people live out of <coughs> this sort of survival mode in terms of how they navigate the world. Something happened to them when they were really young. It set off this, the wheels in motion to, um, to, to come up with a survival tactic or survival tactics for how to navigate life. It can be something really minute. It doesn't have to be a major, major incident of like, you know, a parent's death or something like that. It can be something very small, like, um, you know, you dropped your ice cream on the floor and your mum said, don't be silly, you don't need another one or something like that. And that, it literally can be that small can tip you into starting the wheels in motion of this like survival technique. Because from that, from that moment you decide, oh, I, I mustn't, I mustn't, I must be strong if something bad happens to me. And then every time something bad happens to you, you default to, I must be strong, I must be strong, until you get to this point where you're living your whole life from this perspective of, I must be strong, even though awful things are happening, I must be strong, and, and, and your whole life is a sort of orientated in that way, and it becomes this sort of survival mechanism, and what this guy was saying is, as artists, we can, you know, create from this survival mechanism, or you can have this post-survival thing, where you realise that that survival mechanism that no longer serves you because you get to about sort of 30 35 or whatever where you start to smell a rat about this particular survival mechanism realize oh i always do that and actually i don't need to i've just got this default thing where i and you can start to see the same patterns like circling back in your life circling back in your life and you go and then you start to realize oh maybe i'm maybe i'm maybe i'm maybe maybe something's going on in my life you know you start to maybe recognize these patterns maybe and that there might be a you beyond that, that 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 post survival that survival mechanism becomes the creates the exterior walls of what we think is our personality, but actually there's a, there's more of us beyond that. Does that make sense? And then, and then as artists, sometimes we create from this survival mode, and that might make us want things in our lives and create in our and create things in our art that are based off of this survival mode rather than the full expression of who we are. And so once we get a sense of that there's this survival mode but that there's an us beyond it, you can create art in a completely different way, i.e. post-survival art, so that you don't have to come at your art from the perspective of I have to be strong when shit goes down, I have to be strong when shit goes down. You can come at it from just life, just taking in life in its full unadulterated form. Now, on top of that, what I started to think was maybe there's post-survival success. So, you know, success previous to that might have been defined by the survival mode. Uh, say mine, for example, was like, because having, I was quite bullied at school. So my post-survival, my survival mode would have been like, I'm going to be the most popular kid in school. And you that shows up in many different ways in my career, i.e. going into stand-up. Like, who is not gonna be the most, what better way to be the most popular kid at school than be an awesome stand-up? I'm not saying I was, but like if you go down that road sort of thing. So that's that's how my survival mode showed up, or win an award. If I get on stage and win an Oscar, win a BAFTA, blah, 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 then I'll be the most popular kid at school. No one wanna bully me, blah, blah, blah. So so your how you define your own success could come from this, can be defined by the survival mode. But once you get into a post-survival success, uh, space then your success can be defined in any way you want because it's not about what happened in the past it's not referenced off what happened in the past it's referenced off just what life has to offer you and what fills you with this feeling of success joy I would say is the measure of success is what fills you with joy in the moment it doesn't matter about whether you're bullied or it doesn't matter whether your mum didn't buy you another ice cream anymore because you're in post survival success mode let me just go back on your comments there. So um, Martha says, so true, th these curated lives can be depressing. <laughs> yeah, they can be. But that's like, like I said, it's like how we choose to interpret them rather than what they really are. But I feel you. Ryan says, but I've come to learn that it's just a snap of somebody's life and not the full story. Absolutely. Absolutely. Rose says, yes, a lot of us are in constant fight or flight or hormone response. Totally. I've been working on healing my nervous system. I love this post-survival term. Cool. And Rose also says, I don't believe I have to be tortured to be an artist anymore. Absolutely. And I, and I said in a previous um, um, conversation that we were having that um, my acting coach says that some actors create from um, darkness and some from light. And he said, there's no right or a wrong, but the, the ones that are creating from darkness are not hurting themselves, but they're, they're, they're not 
I don't want to say indulging like as a judgment, but indulging their pain to be able to create their art. You know, you think of all those artists who have to take drugs uh, or be very drunk to be able to create what they create. Um, Edward Munch said that he feels like his depression and his art are one and the same. So they've become fused. Now imagine what that must put you through. Um, if you if your if your if your depressive state or your, your your more negative energies have become fused with your creativity, so that one cannot exist without the other, so therefore your art cannot exist without this depressive state, or you believe that to be the case. I don't think it is. I think you could. I think you could have a post survival art, even if you were creating great masterpieces or whatever. I still think it's possible, but what do I know? Um, so so yeah, like, but there's also a possibility of creating from joy, which could be that post survival art, and therefore give you access to that post survival success, where it doesn't need to be defined by those uh, uh, traumas, big or small, that happened to us when we were younger. Ryan says, "Yep, I was bullied bad, being tall, wearing glasses, stammer, and dyslexia, but it has has made me stronger and more determined to be interesting." I sincerely believe, Ryan. Thank you for sharing that. But the, I think the most interesting people in the world are the people that were bullied at school. I think that bullying, having experienced it, I think it is a two way exchange. But in the sense that there are some people who would not allow themselves to be bullied by that particular bully that bullied us, but. We, 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 we didn't have enough about us as kids to be able to just go, hold on a minute. <laughs> you know what I mean? This, this is a two-way exchange and I refuse to accept it. We're just, we're just kids getting buffeted about by life. Um, but yeah, I, I do think that the most interesting people in the world are people that had a lot of shit when they were, when they were kids. Especially if they worked their way through it and figured out and got stronger. But there's also, there's going to be a, an impact on that. Regardless of how well they overcame it, there will be, there will be an impact of that. And so that's the stuff that we have to go to therapy for, or that's the stuff we have to sort of do our yoga for, or, you know, whatever it is. Because as strong as we may be, the trauma is still in our body somewhere, 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 somewhere. So that's the, that's the, that's the, the journey for us types that, you know, feel like we had a lot of shit when we were kids. It's like, um, just getting it, getting it, getting it out of our body and just making, reconciling that, that stuff a little bit more, to be free of it more. So that it doesn't have to sort of steer our lives now because we, because unconsciously we're probably still steering our lives based off of some of that stuff that happened. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm in a hotel, so that I don't know if there's if uh, how good the um, Wi-Fi is, but is it if it's a problem, then um, I don't know what I could do actually. I mean, I could go on my phone Wi-Fi. I think. I guess I don't know if that would cut us off though that's the only thing I'm thinking but if it's a problem guys let me know um Martha says me too but I thought it was the Joburg internet okay so you're all experiencing problems um Ryan says it shaped my life and it it's taken uh, a long while to adjust my way of, uh, of dealing with it but I'm all good now excellent Elsa's joined welcome Rose says so helpful and interesting thanks Rose would love a cup of tea and chat with you one day oh totally yes 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 please let's do that and um Ryan says, yes, I so agree. Awesome. Thing is, <clears throat> on the bullying front, seeing as we're, we're there. Um, no, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, all right. Yeah, maybe it'll come up another time. So I completely, I thought of something and it was like, it's not vital anyways. Um, God, what was it? Uh that's it that it happened um but we're adults now and it's not to say that i'm not saying this to you specifically ryan because i'm not I'm saying it assuming that <coughs> you haven't reconciled it or made sense of it or whatever but i'm just saying it in general because you know for me as well um is that it happened but we're adults now so it's kind of our responsibility not our fault but our responsibility to just make sure that it doesn't govern the rest of our lives and to do whatever we can to 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 make that the case and not in a sense of because i know it's very tempting uh, you know i sometimes want to just ah, get fucked you amanda <laughs> or whatever real name um but um I, that's not that's not powerful you know i i i had a thought the other day which i think is more powerful was 
I'm grateful for who she was because it made me who I am today in the sense of like the strength that I've gotten and the self-love that I've generated, I've generated off the back of the doubt that she put in me. So wow, I guess I can be grateful for that. Um, I'm not thankful, but I'm grateful that, that that experience has given me the wherewithal to realize how important self-love is for me today. How's, that's, that's what I've got. <laughs> Steve says, whenever I forget what I'm going to say, I always turn to the person and say, this is what getting old looks like. Steve, I'm not old. Um, all right, just a quick time check there. So, oh yeah, <coughs> notes again. I made notes actually. I found a nice happy balance between, you know, cause now we're picking the topic between not over preparing. So I'm not spending hours on it, but I just have a few, I have my ducks in a row basically. So my next um, idea was about how maybe we should take our minds off succeeding and not think about if we're gonna succeed, but what we're gonna do with our success once we get it. So, you know, this thing of, I was talking about of like post-survival success. All right, let's say that, you know, we have gotten to a place where, you know, we don't need our success to be defined by an award or, or validation or something like that, or money, material, material wealth. Then what the fuck are we going to do with this success that we've got? And I thought that, you know how we were talking about tears? Of, hey, Peely, um, you know, we were talking about tears of consciousness. Well, maybe there's tears of contribution because I feel like, with with success there's different different um sort of parts of your world can define what that success should look like and let me try and explain that because i'm i've got the thought in my head but i'm not quite sure how to express it but basically if you were successful success could affect just you me could be my success and i have things like cars and houses and blah whatever or your success could affect your family, in which case, you know, you could make sure your family are, don't have to worry about money, that they've got somewhere nice to live, that, you know, they've got whatever, however that looks for you of taking care of your family. Your success could affect another tier, the community. So you could say, um, and, and, and community doesn't have to be a, a geographical thing. It can be, I want all, say, I don't know, say, for example, you're a dancer and you think, I want dancers to have our own equity. I don't know if dancers have equity or not, but I want dancers to have their own equity. And so that's your community. And therefore you start to use your success to affect whether the fact that dancers have their own union that can look after them and make sure that they have rights in the way that actors do and musicians and stuff like that. You, you, you could be bigger than your community, it could be your country. You could be like, you know what, say if you're an American, you could say, I want to end gun violence. I want to do everything I can to end gun violence. That's what I want to use my success for. You could make it about the world. You could say, do you know what? I want to end poverty. I want to end slum landlords or whatever it is. So, so as much as there's tears of consciousness, there's also tears of contribution where your success, because you, you, you don't want to be a martyr here. Let's not get all worthy. We don't want to get into this headspace where it's just like, oh God, I feel guilty that I've allowed my success. I've, I've got trappings now of success. Like, you know, I don't want to make people feel guilty about taking private jets and shit like that. People give little Leonardo DiCaprio loads of grief for taking private jets. And I'm like, the guy's like a massive, like, it, it, um, what's the word? Co conserv conservationist and, and environmentalist. And I know everyone's going to go, yeah, well, what's he doing on planes? But planes aren't the problem. It's meat production and it's cars. That's where our problem is. And those are the things that people every day use and we don't want to give up just yet. So anyways, that's by the by. <laughs> but like... You know, you can, same as we dance between the consciousnesses, you be getting all bunged up, dance between the consciousnesses, we can also dance between tiers of contribution. So we can, we can, our success can feed ourselves spiritually, energetically, actually, literally, but then we can also go, oh, I want to make sure my family have and oh, I want to start a community pro So, So instead of thinking about, am I going to succeed? It's like, when I get this success, what am I going to do with it? How am I going to make a difference with it? Because like I said to you before, this idea of like making a difference, making a contribution, being of service, I think that's where the money is. Not the money as in reward. That's where I think the reward is. That's, that's where I think, that's when I think you're really going to feel some sense of, massive sense of value. Because... As nice as it would be to have lovely clothes, as many lovely clothes as you want, and live in a lovely house, unless you're a massive, unless your whole being is consumed by your ego, that is just not gonna be satisfying. 
And you can tell it's not going to be satisfying because otherwise everybody would just live like that anyways. Nobody would give money to charity. Nobody would volunteer for stuff. Nobody would, you know, organise events or, 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 or care for their loved ones when they're sick or, or make dinner for their friends or just organise surprise birthday parties. Even that, that's an, an act of service. So it's in our beings to want to, to wanna be of service. And the thing is, as artists, we can consciously choose to to use the success that we can have because, you know, we, we can't deny the fact that, you know, if you succeed at this game, whatever it is you're doing, whether you're an author, a poet, a writer, a painter, an actor, the rewards can be huge. You know, you got a, a lot of money knocking about if you really make it. Um, so think we should think, we can think, what can we do with that rather than, is it gonna happen? And even if you don't have that, all that money and wealth, uh, we can still think in that way. You know, we can still think more in terms of what is my, how is my work a contribution rather than how's it, how, rather than just how does it reward me? It's not an either or, but it's like, it can be part of the thing. And also, you know, this thing I was talking about before about getting your attention off yourself, that's part of it as well. Because if you're not thinking just about how it rewards you, if you're thinking about, if you get your attention off yourself, then it can be about how it can benefit other people, how it can make a difference uh, to the communities around you. How people, how other, how other people can be filled up through your work, through your success. I find it massively rewarding to know because the one thing I don't have a lot of, like, I'm, be, I'm a bit better now. Like, I feel like, like I've got more space in my life. But I, there was a time where I just didn't have time. I didn't have any time to do anything. So the one thing I could do is contribute money. I know that I can. If so, so if anyone hit me up, goes, oh, I'm trying to make a film. Give me some money. I'm, I'm, I'm running a 10k for such and such. I would just give them because I know that that's going to make a difference to their campaign, to, the, to their project or whatever. That was the way that I was able to contribute. And you just find your level, your way, and it's going to be different at different times, isn't it? It's not like it's always going to be money. Sometimes you're going to have time and space and you're like, I'm, I'm going to give my services to you or I'm going to mentor you or I'm going to, even if it's like, I'm going to volunteer on your cake stand. I'm going to, I don't know, whatever it is, just the way of it just not all being about us because I don't think that that's what we're here for. It's just to be about ourselves, to turn our attention inwards. It's got to be outwards it's got to be I don't even know why I'm saying that with such confidence but it just doesn't feel like the sum total of evolution because <laughs> that's what we are is about looking back inside it's got to be about outwards sorry that was quite a long one let me see what you've um, got for me okay so Steve says I got to a point last year where I realized I don't want success I just want to make a difference and weirdly you might get a lot of success from that Steve Chakim says, um, favourite quote from Yoda in Star Wars, do do it or do not do it, there is no try. And I, I tried to remember that from last week when we were talking about, when I was talking about people using the word try to get out of doing things. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely, for me, that made it easier to think how I live life. Hope this made made some sense. Yes, it did. Do or do, do, or do not is the right words. I understand. I understood what you meant completely. I remember the quote. <clears throat> So listen, voice is a little bit um, uh, shredded. I can't think of the right word. So two more things I wanted to just share. Two more thoughts and then I'm going to sign out. Um, it's a follow-on thought from what we talked about last week. Just about how how impermanent the me that, the me that we know ourselves to be is. And I realised that, you know, we are basically an invention every day. Every single day we invent ourselves anew. The only reason that we show up even vaguely appearing to be consistent is because we've decided to be. I'm talking about in terms of personality. Obviously you can't change what you look like necessarily. But I, but I wonder if that maybe we do have some capability that could change what we look like. Some sort of higher part of our brain that, you know, we, we've got such a fixed idea of us that we would probably collapse our men, our being would collapse if we turned up looking different in the mirror. But my point is, um, um, we, 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 we show up as ourselves because we choose to. And so we have the choice to show up as a different person. Like, I, 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 you know, fill in the gap of whatever, because it, it literally is infinite, like the different ways that you could show up. If you are not a generous person, you could literally tomorrow show up as generous if you wanted to. You, cause, because you are not a permanent, you, me, is not a permanent thing. We are just, we are just choosing to be that me every day. 
And so in terms of the success that you have, in terms of how your life shows up, you're, because it suddenly occurred to me as I was having this thought and I was really sort of going down the rabbit hole with it. I was thinking, bloody hell, like we are literally, our, our lives, who we are is the ultimate act of creation because we literally invent ourselves anew every day. It just happens to be that we choose to do the same thing. We choose to turn up being the same person every day. But if you wanted to, you could literally be, you could reinvent yourself anew every single day. It would, it would be effort and tiring, but you you could. And so the way that that's most applicable, I think, in the conversations we're having is that like, how you define the parameters of your life, how you define your own success. Tomorrow you can just start again. <clears throat> you can wake up anew. You can die tonight and wake up a new person tomorrow with a new understanding, a new relationship with your own success, a new relationship with your own power. And the universe will come and test you. Like I said, right at the beginning, it won't, well, they're not tests, they're help, it's help. It's gonna support you by giving you some challenges to get the strength up, to keep going in the direction that you've chosen. Most people succumb to them, to the challenges and go, oh, I can't do it. And they just default back to what they were, to where they were. But if you really want it, just push through the challenge, accept the challenge. Universe, challenge accepted, and then just push through. Um, so that was that. And then the other thing was, Farushka, hi. This, I think this candle is doing my throat in. It's supposed to help and just make me all, God, I hope I don't set up the fire anymore. That'd be awkward. Um, okay. So the last one was, um, as is always the way with this, like I will randomly see on Facebook or or see a video that completely pertains to what what we're planning on talking about. And this week I saw a Facebook video where Arnold Schwarzenegger was doing this talk. I, I guess, I don't know, maybe it was like a corporate event or something, but he was talking about his five rules of, of success. And I thought, Thanks, universe, because uh, who who better to be, be able to sort of succinctly describe success than somebody who's like massively successful, but not only that, overcame lots of things to achieve his success. Um, <laughs> comedy moment, me blowing out the candle. Yeah, well, it would have been even like worse if I'd set off. Yeah, there is a smoke alarm in there anyway. Um, so he, um, yeah, he, cause he said, he said, uh, just to, to paraphrase him, but he was basically saying that when he started, he, he said he was going to be a bodybuilder in Austria and everyone was just like, oh, bodybuilding is an American, you know, it's an American pursuit. Why are you bothering with that? Don't bother, don't bother. And he started and he's like, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to win these competitions. And they're like, whatever, you're not going to go to America. And then he gets to America and he's like, I'm going to be. He said he didn't just want to be an actor. He wanted to be a movie star. And people are like, that's ridiculous. You know, you've got this accent. Look at the size of you. You're like a house, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he's, so he started taking elocution lessons, trying to, like, you know, unlearn his accent, basically. Acting classes, you know, the works. He did every, all in the face of no, 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 no. You can't, you can't, you can't. And then he got, started to get in a couple of bit parts. And then he got Conan the Barbarian. And then obviously Terminator and the rest is history. And but the interesting thing about him is that he he wouldn't he wouldn't have got if they if they wanted to cast somebody like him they would have had to build that person do you know what I mean they would have had to gone for example Chris Pratt you're gonna have to work out you're gonna have to you know eat whey powder whey protein or whatever so that you get to be but and then walks this guy who's already Terminator and they said he seemed more like a robot because of his accent so. He had done half of the job of selling the character of the Terminator just by being who he was, by being true to who he was. So his rules, this is his rules, I just wrote them down. It's one, have a vision. Um, I'm going to agree with that, but I don't think it's a hard and fast rule. Because I, I think, Steve, you were mentioning before, sometimes it can be hard. People feel like, oh, if I don't have a vision, then I'm not achieving, I'm not succeeding. It's like, I don't think it's like a, uh, you're, you've failed if you don't have a vision. It's more like... Having a vision is like having a destination. If at some point, and we've all done this, like literally and figuratively, change you change your mind, change the direction that you want to go in, just change direction. It's just have it's the it's the destination that's the issue. It's not what the destination is. It's having a destination that that is 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 the pertinent thing. <coughs> so have a vision. He goes think big. 
Again, I would agree, agree with that. And I don't think think big necessarily has to mean global. Sometimes people in, interpret that as meaning bigger than I can cope with or bigger, so big it's impossible. It's not that. It's just saying don't limit yourself, basically. Don't, don't think that just because someone like you hasn't done it before or just because someone in your family hasn't done it before that you can't do it. You know, um, whoever was talking about being a good father and a, a good um, a parent, uh, you know, from a certain background, that was thinking big. Do you know what I mean? Like if you've come from like a really abusive environment, if you were brought up in foster care or, you know, something like that, the idea of just being a settled father of two or something would be, you know, people in the foster home would have been pipe dream, mate, dream on. But you, you, you say, no, I'm going to dream big. I am going to, that's, that is what I'm going to, that is what I'm going to create. I'll say you are homeless or something like that. No, I'm going to be a settled father of two with a beautiful home, beautiful wife. And that's going to be my, my, uh, my thing. So think, 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 I, I, I think when he says think big, I think I, I, I would interpret that as don't think beyond your, think beyond limitation. Don't allow yourself to be limited. Work hard. Um, I talked about the hustle in a previous thing. I think rather than work hard, I think it's work smart. I really do. Because I'm not really for those, those sort of videos and motivational thingies where people go, you've got 24 hours in a day, you should be working 20 of those hours, blah, blah, blah. I think no. I think yes, there are times when hard work is appropriate and completely necessary. But I think let's start to work smart. Let the universe do a bit of the heavy lifting on your part because the universe can do everything, can do anything. And so you don't have to do it all yourself. I think the work hard, ugh, get it done mentality is for people who don't trust the universe and think they have to do it all themselves and they burn themselves out and they're exhausted. So work smart. Work hard when you need to and work efficiently other times and make sure you get rest and breaks so that you have context and experience why you would be working that hard, what you're working for. Get to it and give yourself the space to enjoy it. Because Steve says here, yeah, not think big, but think beyond your present circumstances. Yeah, but it's not just beyond your present circumstances. Well, I mean, it's up to you, but I would say, yeah, just think as broadly as your idea, as is appropriate to the idea that you have. I think that's, that's, that's probably what I would say. Um... And Atman uh, has joined. Welcome. Number four, he says, ignore naysayers. Well, I mean, it, again, maybe, maybe naysayers are sent by the universe just to challenge us um, and just to give us a challenge to strengthen ourselves and strengthen our commitment to our idea because, my God, like, there's so much agreement in society that certain things can't be done. And there's so much, like... And, and people are so unconscious to the, their speaking when they say things can't be done, when really they mean they can't do it or they've not seen it done before. What they have seen or not seen or what they can do or not do is literally nothing to do with us. They're, they're just living out of their own limitations and they're imposing them, trying to impose them on you, trying to hold you down to make them feel good about their own limitations. So just ignore the naysayers. And then he goes, five, give back, change the world. I mean, what were we just saying? So that's his part of his, that's the fifth of his five rules of success. Hey, Phil, is um, just to give back and change the world. No big deal, just give back and change the world. But you have to remember that changing the world can be as small as making a difference for one person, helping somebody who, who, who needs help, who hasn't, who's kind of struggling or something or, or just needs a bit of guidance or giving a little bit of extra money to somebody or you know, whatever it is. Like changing the world doesn't have to be a Mandela-esque act. Changing the world can be, do you know what? There's a girl at the coffee shop who, I, who everyone is always rude to and I'm going to be nice to her. I'm going to tell her I appreciate you. And that sounds like try nothing, but actually sometimes that can make all the difference to somebody. You'll know in your life where those opportunities are to change the world. And you'll know that it is a, you know, it's a constant act of creation every day of like how you're going to do it. Like, what are you going to do that's going to change the world today? Is it just not being a knobhead to somebody or just having a conversation with somebody, even though you don't need to, but if you've got your attention off yourself, then you can see that that person really needs to connect with somebody or that person really needs to feel appreciated right now. So that's, the, that's what you can do for them. Take a little bit of time out of your day to do that. 
Or it could be as big as, I'm going to organize this, I'm going to get this slum landlord thing sorted. There's going to be no more slum landlords. You know, whatever it is, however it shows up for you, whatever feels real and authentic for you is how, is how you could give back and change the world. I think that's it. Uh, yeah, that's it. I think success is like such a... Now, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, <clears throat> feeling it, feeling my way into it, it feels like success is more of a paradigm that you can shift your mind into rather than a place that you have to get to. I really just felt that like, oh, wait a minute. Is this like a little trick that the ego's played on us that the success is like somewhere over there that I have to keep marching towards and then one day I'll, I'll somehow, somehow suddenly know when I get there. But actually, I think that success is just literally a shift in your consciousness, a shift in your being that, yeah, you can just like feel it. Maybe it's just about being present. Because at that moment, I was just looking, I could see, sort of see the sunset uh, over over in front of me. I can see the sky just getting darker, but there's this little thin line of red, you know, like sometimes you can, where the clouds are there, but there's, yeah, there's no clouds right on the horizon. And, uh, yeah, you can just like get a real sense of, you can just hear the birds singing. I don't know if you can hear them, but like. It feels like success is by choice rather than some place to, to, to march towards because everyone says we're going that way. Do you know what I mean? All right. <clears throat> I think that's it. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to stop. I think this is just about as much as my throat can take. <laughs> so um, I'm going to call it there. But it's funny because like, with these talks, I always imagine that they're going to turn out a different way. Like with the first spiritual one, I was like, yeah, this is going to be like banging. And I was all over the show. With the success one, I was like really excited to do it. And I lost my voice. And um, Yeah, they do, cha they do change a little bit every week, don't they? They're sort of a bit just like, okay, so what's happening this one? It's quite a, sort of a quieter one, I suppose. It's kind of nice in a way. Different room. This is my favourite setup because I've got like a nice comfortable chair. I feel like I'm sort of doing Jack and Ori or something. And uh, yeah, gosh. Anyway. Okay, guys. Well, look, um, <clears throat> if you joined halfway through or you had to pop away or whatever, it's going to be, I'll pop it up on my story uh, for another 24 hours. And then... Um, yeah, it'll be on YouTube, and the spirituality, the last spirituality one is now up on YouTube, and, um, yeah. I want to, I feel like I should say some final thought, but there isn't one, really. Just, just listening to the birds. Okay, guys, um, I will, oh, 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 admin. So next week is Easter Sunday, so I think I might have family commitments. So I... I think it's okay with you guys if I don't do it, isn't it? If if you want me to, I can do it on Monday. That that I could do, but I don't, I don't think you need that. I don't think. Or or you well, you tell me. I'm because I'm I'm happy to do it. Um, get well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but I think and but then the next week is the evening standard awards, and I think I'm not. But I'm not sure if I'm invited because my play the play that I was in has been nominated, but I'm not sure if I'm if the entire cast is going. So give me a second to find out about that. But if not, definitely I'll be back. You're not around. Okay, okay, cool. Um, but definitely I'll be back on the 15th. So latest, it'll be 15th before we do the next one. But if not, I'll let you know about the 8th. But we, yeah, we'll take a little hiatus, but we'll come back and we'll talk about social media. And what was the other thing? Oh, I scribbled it and now I got stories, stories. Steve said stories. I think that is a really good topic. All right, I'm taking next week off. <laughs> thank you. All right, guys. Well, look, um, thank you so much. And um, yeah, just have a brilliant week. And just, um, yeah, just feel your way into your success or shift your being into your success mode so that you can just enjoy, enjoy, enjoy.
enjoy. Cool. All right, my lovelies, I will see you very soon. And I guess I'll see you on the gram, on the regular gram. And um, yeah, I'll see you in a couple of weeks time. All right, bye. <laughs>